Good morning. I mean, good evening, everyone. Not good morning. Um, welcome to tonight's Berkeley service. Just a reminder, our bulletin has been shared in the um, chat. I will also share it again later in the service for those that might arrive in a little bit. Additionally, all of our music will be shared on a shared screen, um, but we still encourage you to follow along with the bulletin because it might not be as easy to see. Um, we're glad you're here. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
with you and also with you let us pray lord of all power and might the author and giver of all good things graft in our hearts the love of your name increase in us true religion nourish us with all goodness and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god forever and ever Amen. A reading from Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I've heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I've come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, and I will send you to Pharaoh and bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you, that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? 
what shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. If any want to be my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will find it. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So welcome to seminary everyone and to the fall. Now, I hope you've all already completed your mandatory denying yourself training module. Uh, without it, of course, you know that your registration for the semester won't be complete. And the registrar won't be able to confirm that following Jesus is indeed your first preference selection. Crosses, I understand, are now available for contact contactless taking up at the bookstore, but must be ordered in advance using the app. To be uh, a little more serious for a moment, contact, contactless interactions and virtual liturgies make clear statements about the value that we all place on life. So those who want to save their life will lose it are strange words at a time when so many of us are working hard to save our lives by saving them. 
when life for so many is on the line and saving life seems so particularly urgent. Perhaps Jesus saying isn't quite as opposed to our commitment to saving and looking after life as it might appear on the surface. After all, he also speaks about saving life, doesn't he? But he offers a different perspective on how. This interaction involves uh, Peter's rebuke of Jesus and Jesus' response to him. And they offer two familiar approaches to power and to the systems of life and death, which are just as real in our time as in theirs. Remember, of course, that this gospel follows immediately on from Peter's more successful moment, uh, which we heard in the previous week's gospel, when Peter manages to get the test question right, confessing Jesus Christ as Messiah. And Peter is really just following through the logical implications of what he understands it to be to confess Jesus as Messiah now. He uh, imagines that Jesus, having uh, had his identity revealed, will use power the predictable and obvious way, that he will save life. He will save life by saving it, by suppressing his enemies and imposing his will. Now, if we are honest, do we not sometimes wonder why Jesus does not, in fact, take up the option that Peter envisages? How much easier for us if Jesus did not indeed impose his will to create a more just world? Why not send in the armies of federal angels? Why not overcome the pathetic leaders in Jerusalem and Capernaum? Why not build the wall against evil? Well, perhaps some of those elements of all too familiar rhetoric offer a clue as to why this is not the way that Jesus will choose. The power that God chooses to exercise in the world is not the power of coercion and display, but only the power of love. Because faith, when weaponized, rapidly becomes the preserve not of angels' armies, but of demons. You cannot, Jesus says, in rebuking Peter, impose the power of love by force. We should not confuse concern for saving life with its ready substitute, which is mere self-protection. This I think is fundamental to understanding the difference between how Jesus calls us to save life and how we might otherwise be inclined to do so. Force protects the self and those who are considered the extension of the self. Force takes weapons out onto the patio as much as go past. Love, however, protects the other. Love believes and calls into being a world in which I am deeply connected with all, and I have no particular stake in preserving only my own patch or those who I consider to be the extensions of my own ego because I know that I am as deeply connected to all as I am to those who are close at hand and who share the particularity of my privilege. This is how Jesus calls us to live. And this may lead to suffering. Not always, but it may lead to suffering because many already suffer in any case. Because you see, in most cases, the cross is not chosen the cross is thrust upon people. This is the irony at the heart of Jesus saying, the whole idea of choosing a cross is absurd. It is the very manifestation of coercion. The privileged, and I must count all of us who are listening here as the privileged in one form, even if not equally privileged or in all the same ways, but the privileged must and can choose what others have no choice about. Love invites us to the deepest concern for life and safety, but of the other and of the whole, and not just of myself in relation to them. And so vulnerability becomes the corollary of love. So the cross is not actually available for contact, contactless pickup. Or as the Japanese theologian Kosuke Koyama put it, there is no handle on the cross for us to pick it up with. 
we can take up the cross, but it does not thereby become our property. It does not become another attribute. It does not become a tool. Rather, its weight will change us. Its weight will change how we walk and where once we have taken it up. We trust that this year will bring us all insight and at times will indeed bring us great joy. We hope that this year will bring us achievements and knowledge and skills. But in the end, the test of whether this experience has done what it should will not be in what we have acquired, but rather in who and what turns out to have acquired us. Welcome to seminary indeed, but discipleship, you already noted in that preferential course system, discipleship is not a course available here for credit. Cross, gospel, Jesus, God, none of these are being offered as objects for our use. None of them can be summed up in competencies or learning goals or outcomes because they can't be rendered available to us at least not without evacuating them of all meaning, in which case they simply become idols, things available for us to pursue our own goals rather than to do what it is that Jesus calls us to in gospel. They are not tools and skills we can acquire and wield because God invites us not to be equipped, but to be transformed. Your seminary experience has the potential to be a means to be transformative, to take you in various directions. Indeed, we pray that it will be transformative, but not every transformation is good. Lives are lost here as well as found. Because knowledge itself and even community itself are not enough to save us. Whoever would save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life will save it. And there is one who will save us and our life because he loved us first and calls us with him to love now. Amen. Please join me in saying together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Peace be with you and uh, by all means use the chat to um, reflect that communally, individually, and otherwise. Uh, it's good to be with you this evening for this first of our community worship services for the fall. 
those of you who aren't familiar with the shape of what we're doing, it's the so-called ANTE, A-N-T-E, communion service, which is the first part of the Holy Eucharist, uh, but which will finish uh, in not very long after we've had um, another hymn and one or two more elements, but before we, of course, have the celebration of the Eucharist proper. Um, we hope that you'll be able to join us on other Wednesdays and whether you're watching us live uh, with us here at Yale or whether you're watching us on recorded version on YouTube at some other place, we're glad that you've joined us tonight. On other Wednesdays, we'll often have students, uh, senior students preaching and the occasional guest as well. Um, it's difficult for me to see with uh, this configuration uh, how many of us there might be who have other announcements to share. So if there are one or two people who have important news or announcements to share, please uh, uh, do so uh, now if you're able. Thank you. I did have an announcement. The inaugural Spanish worship, first worship of the semester will be this Friday at 1230. Uh, the schedule from here on out will be Tuesday and Fridays at 1230. The link has been posted in the Berkeley calendar. We're trying out a whole new format. Uh, all are welcome, native Spanish speakers, Spanish language learners, aspirational speakers, and even the Spanish curious. So we're going to experiment with it. We're going to try something new. Uh, and you can zoom on in. Thanks. Thank you, George. Um, tied to that uh, same group on behalf of Marta, um, we are also curating a bilingual worship in Marquand on the 15th of September. Um, and we're looking for more readers to assist in leading the prayers and singers. And since it's bilingual, we'll also need some readers to be reading and praying in English as well. Thank you all.
And now may the wisdom of God, the love of God and the grace of God strengthen you to be Christ's hands and heart in this world in the name of the Holy Trinity. Amen. Will you please unmute yourself to join in the dismissal? Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. Bye.